Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to do a pretty simple example of calculating a moment. But in this case, in this example, things might look a little bit different. So here in this diagram that I've drawn, I have a rigid body here and it's some metal bar or some metal arm. And at the very end of this arm, there's a force of 85 newtons that's being applied here at point A and it's acting straight downwards. And our question is, what is the moment about point O? Now, point O is this right here. So we see that the arm is acting in this orientation, and it's acting at a angle of 65 degrees above this horizontal. And this right here tells us that the length of this arm is 0 0.7 meters. So we're going to solve this problem in two different ways. One is sort of a graphical approach and using the right-hand rule and just kind of intuition about what we already know about finding and calculating moments. But the second way is going to be the equation way. So remember, the equation for a moment is R cross F. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, R is just going to be from here all the way to point A because that's where the force is located. But remember, when we're calculating moments, that position vector really should be to the perpendicular line of action for that force if we wanted to do it sort of the easy and quick way. So again, I'm going to do this example in two different ways. One, sort of using intuition and kind of a graphical approach to figure out what the moment is. And then two, using an actual position vector and the force vector and calculating this out using what we know about cross products and vector algebra. So let's go ahead and get started with the first way. So the first way is going to be, I'll just call it graphical, even though it's not entirely graphical, but it's sort of the more intuitive way to figure out what the moment is for this 2D diagram. Okay, so remember to do this graphically, we need to look at this force. And we know this force is acting straight down and its line of action is right here. So it's going straight down in a vertical direction. And what we really want to do is we want to find the perpendicular direction to this line of action. And so again, you might be thinking that R could be this, and it certainly could. However, it's much easier to find the distance from this, or from this line of action here for the force to the origin point, which would be right there. So this creates a 90 degree angle. And from there, we can figure out what the moment is. So what is this value right here, this distance right here? The only thing we know about this diagram is that the arm itself is 0.7 meters. And we know the angle that this is making with the horizontal. How do we figure out what this distance right here is? Well, that should be fairly straightforward. I'm going to call this distance right here, and this distance is to the line of action for that force, I'm going to call that x. Now, x is really the hypotenuse length right here, because remember, this forms a right triangle. There's the perpendicular corner. And we know this is 65. And so what we can do is we can take the hypotenuse and multiply it by the cosine of 65. So the hypotenuse is 0.7 meters times the cosine of, well, 65 degrees. Now, if we calculate this out, x becomes 0 0.2958 meters. So that is just this distance right here. And we know that the force value is just 85 newtons. And that's given by this right here. And so based off of these two values alone, we can calculate the magnitude of the moment to simply be R times F. Now, there's also a sign of theta right here. But in this case, because the angle between these two vectors, R and F, and remember, R in this example, we're taking to be this right here, and our force factor is this, the angle between them is 90 degrees. And we know that the sine of 90 degrees is simply one. And so I just left the sine of 90 out there because of that. And so the magnitude for the moment is really R times F, but here we're taking R to be X, and that is this value right here. 
So this value right here times F gives us a value of 25.1 newtons. Now, because this force vector is acting this way, and the position vector that we took for this first uh, case is acting this way. You can see that if this was the force and this was that position vector, our right-hand rule tells us that when we cross R into F, so we're going this way, our thumb will be pointing into the board, into the video, into the screen. And so we know that the direction this moment is going is clockwise. So it's going this way. And remember, we said clockwise is negative. Counterclockwise, or going this way, is positive. And so really our answer becomes 25 newton, and I should have said newton meter, right? Because we're multiplying force times distance, force times distance. Our answer really just becomes 25.1 newton meters, and it's going in the clockwise direction. So again, this right here is just the magnitude of what we get when we multiply R and F together, and this would give us uh, the direction. So if I wanted to do this a little bit more formally, I would actually not put the direction here because this right here has no arrow above it. So this is not a vector. This is just the value of the moment. If I wanted to write this more officially, I could say moment is 25.1 Newton meter, and it's going clockwise. Okay, so we did this sort of the graphical way and using the right-hand rule. The second way that I want to do this is using the actual equation that we drew up here. So the actual definition of a moment is this right here. We're taking the R vector, which is the position vector, crossed with the force vector. So I'm going to show you this in a slightly different variation than what we did with the graphical approach. So with the graphical approach, I said we could just take this distance right here, which we know to be is perpendicular to the line of action for the force, and we use that to simply calculate the moment. In this case, however, I'm going to draw the position vector right there. So this is going to be our position vector, and you can see that the position vector r is going to have two different components. It's going to have something along the x-axis, and it's going to have something along the y-axis. So again, our axes are going to be like this. Positive y is going up, positive x is going to the right. So the very first thing we want to do is try to figure out the r vector. So this r vector right here is going to have an x component and a y component. Now the x component is going to be this right here. And the way we figure that out is, well, we know the hypotenuse for this triangle. It's 0.7. What we can do is take that 0.7 meters times the cosine of 65, and that'll give us this value right here. So in other words, 0 0.7 meters times cosine of 65 degrees gives us the x component, right? The i unit vector, the x component of this position vector r. And again, the position vector this time is from O to A. So this is R. Okay, well, what about the Y component? The Y component is going to go from here to there. And this is the vertical side of this triangle. And so what we can do here is, well, we can still take the same hypotenuse, 0 0.7 meters, but this time we're multiplying it by the sine of 65 degrees. And this is going to be the Y component along the J axis. Okay, and if we calculate these values out, I get 0 0.2958 meters in the I direction plus 0 0.6344 meters in the Y direction or the J direction. Now, we need to do the same thing for this force vector right here. So this force vector right here, what is its component? So F again, has an x component and a y component. Now, if we look at this diagram right here, this force vector is acting straight down. It doesn't have a component along either the positive x or the negative x directions. So I could say that the x component is 0, and that's along the i, plus the y component. Now, the y component is 85 newtons, and it's acting straight down. So this is going to be negative because we said y going up is positive. So plus negative 85 newtons 
in the J direction. Okay, awesome. So now that we have R and F, I'm going to take these vectors and I'm going to plug them into this equation right here. And I'll do that over here. Okay, so that looks something like this, where we have this position vector R crossed with this force vector F. And all I did was just take these two vector quantities and plug them into this equation. So the cool thing about this is now we can just use algebra and what we know about the distributive property to calculate what the moment about O is in terms of its components. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to take this value and cross it with this value. And you can see that if we cross any number times zero, we get zero as the result. Okay, how about this value crossed with this negative 85 newtons? Well, if we do that, then we get a value of negative 25.1459 newton meters. And because we're doing I cross J, we're going to get a positive K. Remember, the unit vector diagram is I, J, K. And if we do the cross product in a counterclockwise direction, if we did I cross J, we would get positive K. So this right here would be positive K. Okay, let's do this times this. Well, that's just zero, so I can just add zero. And then finally, this times this. Now, we could get a value for this 0.6344 and this negative 85, and that would give us a valid, a valid value. But because we're doing j cross j, that is just going to be zero. And so this last term is going to be zero. Again, when you do the cross product of the same unit vectors, you're always going to get zero. So i cross i is zero, j cross j is zero, k cross k is zero. And so what we're left with is that the moment is equal to negative 25 point, I'll just shorten this to one, newton meters in the k direction. And this is kind of cool because it matches up with this value that we got here. Here, it's a 25.1 newton meter, and we just drew the direction this way, and we know that counterclockwise, or I'm sorry, clockwise, going, going this way, is negative. And here, when we did the actual mathematical equation way, we got a negative. So this and this do match up, and that is simply the moment about O due to this force right here.